Hello, BookTube. How are we doing today? Super. Um, real quick um, housekeeping notes. If you saw my video yesterday about David Goodis and um, a bunch of other ramblings, um, I was putting up um, pictures of the paperbacks of the paperback releases of Black Friday. And um, one of them had a cover that was confusing to me, but also the description was extremely confusing to me. Um, so I'll post it again, whatever. Um, but if you know, or if you have a copy of this book, is this actually Black Friday or like because it doesn't sound anything like it. So um, if you could drop me a line on that, that would be awesome. Um, but today there was some big news. Um, I know you guys are all riveted to hear what it is after seeing the title of this video. But um, the WWE sold the WWE Network to NBC Universal, so it will stop being on... Um, the WWE Network on March 18th, and it'll be on Peacock. And um, they sold it for five years for $1 billion. So um, I don't know what this means, but because um, I have been reading a lot of wrestling books, and until um, I talk about all the wrestling books I've read, I figured Monday nights... Monday wrestling books that I will talk about a wrestling book on Monday. And today, um, we are not only going to talk about one wrestling book, but we're going to talk about two wrestling books and um, kind of do a versus on them because they're both about the same thing. Um, and that is the rise and the fall of WCW, um, and the Monday Night Wars, and probably the most, um, popular time, um, that there's ever been in wrestling, at least based on television views. So, the first book we have is, um, the Death of WCW by R.D. Reynolds and Brian Alvarez. R.D. Reynolds is from WrestleCrap, and Brian Alvarez is from Wrestling Observer. Um, um, the Death of WCW came out, I believe, originally in 2004, which was only three years after um, WCW was purchased by WWE. Um, and... What that book does well is that it basically chronicles Monday Nitro um, weekly and explains the good and the bad. And so if you watched it um, back in the, I think, basically from... 94, 95, um, up through, uh, I mean, I guess 2001, um, I think the high water mark was 97, 98, um, but if you watch during that time, reading this book is really fun because you could, like, go through it and go, oh, yeah, dude, yes, yeah, I remember that, and so it's, Really cool. The um, downside of it, I guess, and this could be an upside depending on how you feel, but it is kind of snarky. So um, if you like snark, then you'll like this book. And um, I put the original um, cover up, but they have done a 10-year anniversary to it, and um, I think Brian Alvarez said that they're probably going to do another anniversary edition sometime, um, so 
that will be something interesting, I guess. So they've added stuff and, um, that is the version I read the 10 year anniversary of the book. So this is a very fun book talking about, I mean, for those of you who don't know in the early eighties or mid eighties, um, wrestling went mainstream. They broke the territory mold that they went. Well, Vince McMahon and WWF went from, um, the New York local market to expanding across the country, um, going national because of cable. And they made a deal with MTV, um, got Cindy Lauper involved, um, had this just giant upswell. Hulk Hogan came in after Rocky three. Um, you had Mr. T, uh, it was just huge. And then WrestleMania happened, and it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Then, um, because of the steroid trial in the early 90s, I think the actual trial happened in 94, but um, the investigations and all this stuff started happening around 91. Um, WWF started um, freaking out and getting rid of all their big steroided wrestlers, which is why um, we saw um, Bret Hart become the champion and uh, people like Shawn Michaels getting pushed. They went with um, cut but smaller dudes, not like the big giants like that I grew up with. And um, all those guys that they got rid of as being too old... um, they ended up once uh, Eric Bischoff took over WCW, um, which at this point was owned by Turner Media, Ted Turner. Um, they had the coup of the century and got Hulk Hogan to come to WCW. Once that happened, the floodgates opened and all these old WWF guys came over. Um, and then you had... Uh, Turner wanting to go head to head with McMahon. So McMahon and WWF had Monday Night Raw. So um, Ted Turner started uh, Monday Nitro. And um, then when the Outsiders came over, which was Scott Hall, who was Razor Ramon, and Kevin Nash, who was Diesel, um, come over to WCW pretending or portraying their WWF characters saying that they were coming to invade, um, that caused a lot of shit, that caused a lot of um, legal ramifications, um, but it caused a lot of ratings. And then they kept talking about the third man, Bash at the Beach comes on, um, the third man, who's it going to be? It's Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan does his first uh, heel turn after... um, being the poster child for WWF, it was healed before that, but we don't remember those times. And um, the NWO was formed, and Hot Topic started selling NWO merch, and wrestling became very mainstream. And then uh, with Austin and the Austin 316 at the other company, um, all this stuff, and like the ratings were like in the tens. Um, the nines and the tens, and um, now um, Rob would be lucky to get uh, two. Um, it's just such a different world now. Um, but anyway, so WCW was beating Raw in the ratings every week. They won. Um, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Okay. And the bottom fell out, and um, they started doing um, ridiculous storylines. They screwed up the Sting return. They um, screwed up Goldberg's undefeated streak, the finger poke of doom. Um, the list goes on and on with the stupid things WCW was doing. And then in 2001, um, Turner sold um, WCW to WWF, and 
Um, the Monday Night Wars were over, and Vince McMahon ruled supreme, let's say. Um, but um, the Death of WCW book basically talks about the ratings, the staff, like the talent, I mean, the storylines, what in there basically turned this product to shit. Now, we go to a newer book, which um, is written by a guy named Guy Evans, called Nitro. This book, um, like a lot of people, I didn't understand why this book needed to happen, because the death of WCW seemed very final. Um, But this book, like, I would recommend this book to anyone who just wants to learn about television, um, television marketing, um, corporate takeovers, um, because this book does focus on all the hokey bullshit WCW did, but it also focuses on um, the bigger picture things, like um, Time Warner buying um, Turner, And then AOL merging with Time Warner and what AOL thought about the television product and what they wanted to do to change everything. And it gives you a look at WCW from a corporate standpoint, Um, because the biggest difference between WWE um, then WWF and WCW, is that WWF was a wrestling company, whereas WCW was a division of a television company. Um, So just seeing the ways that little things... And then at the end of the day, um, and you'll read this in the book, I'm, I'm not giving anything away, this is like pop culture history here, Um, it wouldn't have mattered what happened, um, by the time WCW was sold. Like, WCW maybe could have done anything, and it wouldn't have mattered. So, it's just super interesting. It's a great read. Um, it's very heavy. Um, Guy Evans, like, interviews everybody, like, the accountant for this department, He interviews the head of um, human resources on beta, 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 beta. Like every corporate nonsense job you could think of, Guy Evans interviewed. Whereas the death of WCW, um, they just commentated on how you would watch it and what kind of stuff you would hear backstage kind of stuff. Um. And there have been a lot of people, Eric Bischoff included, who really railed against the Death of WCW book and just said it was the biggest crock of shit ever, blah, blah, blah. At StarCast last year, or the year before, um, Eric Bischoff was on a panel with R.D. Reynolds to talk about the Death of WCW. And um, what it boils down to is that all the shit you're going to read in Death of WCW is true. It's just, for the most part, it's just snarky with a lot of attitude. Like, they agree, like, Eric Bischoff won't say this, but in the panel, they agreed on every point. Um, But I think it was just the way Death of WCW was written is why um, there's so much heat on that book. Because the Nitro book and the Death of WCW book, for the most part, tell the exact same story, just from different vantage points. So if you are a fan of the Attitude Era, the Monday Night Wars, the NWO, the whole thing, I highly, highly, highly recommend both of these books to be read um, in conjunction with one another. Um, But if you've read these, um, let me know what you think. If you disagree with um, my expertise on the subject, let me know down below. Um, And we will 
see you soon. <laughs>